If you're from the American South, then you're probably very familiar with sweet tea pleasantries, an indescribably intense desire to leave the South, and kudzu. Kudzu is a Chinese species of vine that was originally introduced by the government to fight soil erosion in the early 20th century. Farmers were paid to allow over 35 million seedlings to take root in their land. But unfortunately, the Mexican boll weevil soon migrated to America, devastating the southern farming industry. Kudzu started growing out of control in abandoned farms. The plant has a special ability to asexually reproduce by replanting its vines, turning them into roots any place it can touch soil. Today, kudzu has entirely engulfed the American South. In China, the cold winter months tend to cause the overgrowth to die back, but the perpetually warm southern environment makes for an all-too-cozy kudzu. The plant only became a pest because of its transportation, so perhaps it's wise to not introduce an exotic species into the wild without a good reason. Tell that to Eugene Schieferlin, a wealthy drug manufacturer who managed to release all of the birds mentioned in Shakespeare's works into New York City in 1890. The most successfully introduced species, the starling, has since spread throughout the country and is now considered one of America's most destructive invasive species. The starling was mentioned in Henry IV, where it's taught to speak words that would remind Henry of past misdeeds. So perhaps the starling should serve to remind us to be more careful when introducing plants and animals to a new ecosystem. Normally, as with kudzu, the introduction of an invasive species is usually done with the best intentions. Take, for example, the Asian mongoose, introduced in Hawaii in the 1800s. Sugarcane crops were all the rage at the time, and when Westerners introduced the crops to Hawaii, they also unintentionally introduced rats, who were common stowaways on ships. So the Asian mongoose was introduced to prey on the rats, after a similar method had proven successful in Jamaica. Unfortunately, the mongoose soon realized that it was much easier to prey on endangered Hawaiian bird eggs. So now Hawaii is overrun with mongooses and rats, at the cost of the sugarcane and bird populations. Like the little old lady who swallowed the fly, we just can't seem to get it right. It's hard to predict how a transplanted species will react in a new ecosystem. When our society expands to a new area, we're always tempted to make it our own with plants and animals from our past, sometimes at the expense of the native environment. So perhaps the most destructive invasive species of all is man.